Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, can I start? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so thank you very much for uh, for giving me the chance to talk today in this very nice seminar. So um, thank you, very, thank you very much for the organizers. Thank you for uh, Professor Skip and all the, the parts of this very very nice seminar. As I said, so my talk will be uh, in some sense on the analysis of some PDS arising in fluid mechanics and hydrodynamics. I'm going to be uh, be uh, very soft in my talk. I will not try, try to, to to not go very deeply into the details of the, the proof. So basically, there uh, there will be no no proof in the in the slides. But please feel, feel feel free to interrupt me at any time if you have uh, any questions and especially technical ones. Okay. So if you have any technical question, I'll be happy to answer it uh, or discuss it if, uh, if if possible. Okay. So. What are the, the main questions that we want to, to, to solve in what, basically when you look at an equation? So you want to, to, to know if this equation has a solution or no. So we are interested in existence of solutions. You want to know if this solution is unique or no, if, 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 if it exists in some, in some sense that we will precise later. And you maybe want to, to, to write down explicitly your solution. Let me just uh, yeah. So you want maybe to uh, uh, write down explicitly your solution if you if you are capable to. Otherwise, you want to study some qualitative properties of it, of the solution if it is possible as well. So these are some questions that you you may ask for a general equation. For but for for PD PD in in in, in particular, you may be uh, be interested in the stability of the equations in in some sense. Also, I'll be I'll be more precise about, about this in the sequel. You want to study the behavior of, of solutions, if you are global solutions, or you want to study what we call the, the, the blow phenomena. You want to understand what happens at finite time if your solution blows up at, uh, at finite time. So also it is known also in the literature by description of singularity uh, for formation. So these, these, are basically, uh, the, sorry, these are basically the questions, uh, uh, the, the questions I would be interested in uh, during this, uh, uh, this talk. Okay, so, as I said, so I'm interested in PDEs arising in fluid mechanics, and uh, more or less, this is more or less the same as fluid dynamics. So the fluid is um, can appear in nature in, in two, two ways. So in a liquid case and uh, say a gas case. Okay, in both cases, this, this material is uh, has the ability to to, to 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 take the shape of its container. Okay, and all of these uh, uh, the, all the dynamic of these fluids is governed by what we call the Navier-Stokes equations, which is due to Navier and, and, and Stokes. So these are the two mathematical uh, mathemat mathematicians who wrote down these equations uh, uh, at the beginning of well, well, let's say, say one, 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 150 years ago. So what, what do these equations do in, in, in general? So imagine that you have, let me let me zoom a bit. So imagine that you have some, some fluid going down from some source of water here. So this is this can be water, for instance. And imagine that you decided to pose to, to pose your movie for uh, at some time t, t equals zero. Okay, so you pose here, you pose here, and you input, you collect some, some data from, from this, from this uh, this uh, this uh, this, uh, this, uh, this this picture here, such as the velocity of the fluid, its pressure, etc. You put this in uh, data in your, into the Navier-Stokes equations, and what these equations should do, basically, it should predict how the, how, how 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 this fluid will, will be uh, in, at a time t uh, say higher than, than zero. Okay, so it should be uh, giving you the information on, on, in, in, in the future movement of, of the fluid. Hopefully, this is what we, we, are, we, are, we are waiting for. I, this is what we are asking for from, from our uh, equations. Okay, so this turns out to be not really uh, uh, easy to do because, well, as, I, as you see here in the same example, I'm considering the, the case where I have, I have, for instance, a fluid which is going down from a source here. So you may, you may notice different regimes appearing in your, in your uh, in your experiment here. So the, the, there is water going in, water going out, some swirls, some air bubbles. So it's not really, really easy to predict the movement of a fluid due to this kind of, say, different regimes uh, appearing in this very, very simple situation. So you, may, you can imagine very uh, more complicated uh, situations when dealing with complicated problems. So this is basically, so this fluid basically do not, that does not flow, flow in, in a smooth fashion. Okay, so here I'm considering, you, you can look at it as water. So this is basically water, but 
if you do the experience with another fluid such as honey, so maybe this, the, 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 situa the situation is, is a bit easier to, to deal with. So the honey is more predictable in the sense that I will uh, explain later. Okay? And this is due to the viscosity. So this, the honey is more viscous than the, than, the fluid, than the water, for instance. So this helps a bit in the, in the, in the description of its evolution. Okay, so the main points of my talk is, are, are the following. I'll, I'll complete my introduction by, uh, by stating some, say, very now, the notions in, of, of MPD. So I'll say in a few words, what, the, what is the well-posedness issue in the sense of Hadamard? And I will present, I'll, I'll just define the notion of a solution. So the notion of the solution usually depends on, this, on the equations. But here I'll, I'll try just to, 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 to state the, the, the main two, two, two definitions of solution to, BT, to PDEs. Then uh, I'll concentrate on this, the second part of my talk, when um, I'll try to, to, to concentrate more on, on the Navier-Stokes equation and the Euler equations, and then I'll give some, uh, some, 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 some remarks, some, some results on the coupling with, with other equations, such as the Bosinas equations, the, Euler, the, 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 the Maxwell equations. It's a, it's a, okay, so, but the, the main part of my talk is, is this one. At the end, I will, I will state some contributions of my, uh, with, with my collaborators during my thesis and uh, during my postdoc here in Abu Dhabi. Okay, so the well posedness in the sense of Adamar is in a uh, few words the following. So imagine that I'm giving you an initial data in some re very reasonable space X and I, 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 so in this case, I, I say that my PD is, is well posed if there is a solution, if I can construct a solution, at least for a short time, T that depends on, on, on my data, my, my solution should be at least so continuous in time. So may, may, sometimes we work with weak continuity, but I'll, I'll, I'll back to, to talk about this later. So imagine that this is what I want. So I give you an initial data in some reasonable space. I ask you to give me back a solution at least up to some uh, 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 finite time t0 depending on, those, on the solution. So this is the very reasonable uh, uh, point to ask. Secondly, I want to be able to construct your unique solution. Imagine that you are, you are, you are doing some experience at the lab, uh, you, you input some, some, some data, so you are, you are, you are expecting to, to get a unique uh, result from, from your, uh, to, to, to your experience, okay? So the third point that we ask for, for, for our PDE to be well posed in the sense of Atomar is what we call the continuity dependence on the data. Roughly speaking, this means that if you do a small perturbation to your, to your initial data, you expect to get a solution which is very close to, to your initial, uh, initial data without the perturbation. Okay, so this is what we call a continuity dependence on the data. So basically, this is what we mean by uh, a well posedness in the sense of Adamar. So mar uh, uh, moreover, if you can prove that the time of existence in, is infinite, then we say that the solution is globally well posed. Okay. The typical example is uh, basically lin linear, no, no, uh, linear PDEs when, with, with very small co co coefficients. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay, so the notions of, of solutions that we are going to deal with, so here I'm mentioning two, uh, two, two, two notions. The first one is what we call the uh, solution in the sense of distribution. I, uh, Bila already uh, spoke about this in his, in his talk. I just want to mention it again to make sure everything is clear. So a solution, the weak solution is, is in general a solution to, to PDE, but but you, you cannot really give a sense to all, to all the terms in your PDEs. For instance, here, I, I'm, giving, I'm giving you an example for a transport equation. I'm, I'm considering my initial data to be in Lubeck spaces. So basically, if F is just in Lubeck spaces, you cannot give sense to this product or to this, uh, to this term here. So the idea is to put everything on some uh, very nice uh, test function. And you, in this case, you say that F is, is a solution, is a weak solution to your linear equation here, if and only if it satisfies this weaker form for every test function. Website. Of course, if, you're, if, if you have a very nice solution, you can go back to the classical solution, which we uh, I'll call here strong solution, by just by uh, doing some integration by parts in this form. So I, I believe this is very, uh, very well understood in uh, if so more or less Bilal uh, spoke about this in, in his talk. If you have any questions, do not hesitate. But I think uh, I believe this is, this is quite uh, easier to, to, to process, at least for now. Okay, so let me start the first part of my talk 
on the on the Navier Stokes equations of an incompressible flow. So basically, these equations are just uh, uh, the second uh, the Newton second law, which says that the the acceleration is equal to 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 to, to the sum of, of forces. Here I'm considering so the sum of forces can be the interior forces plus the exterior forces. Okay, sorry, I can I have to this V. Okay, so this is Newton's second law. Here in my equations, I'm not considering any external forces. So my external force is zero, and on, I'm only consider, considering internal forces, which are in my, in my in my equations here. So F interior forces are minus Laplacian of P plus mu delta V. Okay, so roughly speaking, V is the velocity of the fluid, P is its pressure, and mu is its vis viscosity. Okay, so if um, if you have if you have a fluid, let me just make maybe a, a small draw here. If you have a fluid moving in 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 a tube, and imagine if you have uh, if you have here a high high pressure region region a low pressure region, so the, the fluid will be moving in this in this direction from 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 the high the high pressure region to, to the low pressure region. So you, you, may, you may see that, that there is some, some, some internal forces uh, acting on your fluid. So you have to put something here in, in, in your equations. And this guy here comes from the interaction of the, uh, the, the particles. Maybe maybe Dahman or Benzema will give us some, some more explanation of that from the Boltzmann equation, how to, how to get this, this, this guy here from, from the, the hydrogen dynamic. So let, 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 me, let me do not go uh, deeper into details of that. These are our, our equations that we are going to look at. And it, 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 uh, uh, it describes more or less the evolution of the fluid. V is the velocity. Of, of the fluid. And divergence free here just says that you are looking at an incompressible uh, flow, saying that if you if you have a fluid which is occupating some, some domain omega after some time t, maybe the domain of the, the, the domain will change its shape, but the volume will stay, will remain the same. This is what uh, this condition here says more or less. Okay, so let us forget about uh, the physical uh, explanation of, of all of that. Let us look at the mathematical point of view. Here I'm considering uh, my, my equations in the whole domain. So this is not physical domain, uh, uh, obviously. So D will be higher than two in all my talk. I'll be more specific about uh, particular results on dimension two or dimension three uh, later. But for now, D is higher than two. Mu is the first quantity of the field, as I said, is a non-negative parameter, and P is a scalar function. V is a vectorial, uh, is, is a vector field. So it, 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 it contains uh, deep, deep components. For the notations, the divergence theory is just the, the scalar product of nabla with, uh, sorry, this is V. So this is the scalar product, divergence V is scalar product of nabla with V, which is given by this. And for any function F, which can be vectorial function, vector field or, or just a scalar function, the V times uh, gradient of F is the sum of VJ, VJ, the, VJ the, the, the derivative of F with the, in, in, in this G direction. Okay, so for me, when I write DG, you have to understand that this, uh, this is what I mean by, by the, the, so the derivative with respect to, to XJ uh, uh, direction. Okay, so if I want to give you just a, a very large picture about what is happening at the mathematical level of, of these equations, is the, so this is the, it, it is just in few, in few words. This is what happens. These equations are basically a, a competition between the convection term and the, the, the diffusion term. So if this guy in red, the, the red guy is what you call the convection term, if the convection term beats the, the diffusion term, you have you have a directly turbulent flow as we saw in the, in the, at the beginning. The, the first example I gave you, where the fluid is in general not predict predictable. So you don't know how to solve the equations if the, 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 the convection term beats the, the diffusion term. However, in the, in the other situation where the diffusion term beats the, the convection term, this is a situation where you are looking at a smooth flow, very nice smooth flow, where part, you, you, can, you can look at it as a, as, as a fluid which is moving in just one, one direction. So there, there are no, no complicating things hap happening in your experiment. And this is what we call in the literature uh, uh, laminar, laminar flow. Okay, so let us move on and say a few words about the main properties of the Navier-Stokes equation. So if you want to deal with the Navier-Stokes equations, these three points you have you have to at least to, to keep to keep them uh, 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 on mind. 
So the first point concerns the energy equality. So suppose that you have a very nice uh, uh, solution denoted here V that allows you to do whatever you want to do as computation, part, the, the, uh, the integration by parts, multiplication, etc. So then your solution should satisfy this uh, this identity. So this, uh, this is what you call energy equality. It says more or less that your, if your initial data is in L2, this is true in any dimension, L2. So if your initial data is in L2, then your solution should be in L infinity in time, L2 should be in L2 in time, and should gain one derivative to be also in L2, L2. Okay, so this is formal for now, but we will justify this uh, later. The second point you have to, 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 uh, uh, to take into consideration is what we call the scaling invariance. So if you, so imagine that you have a solution denoted here, V0, v, P, so V0 is just in the initial data, Imagine that you have this solution, which is defined on some interval zero t. Then you can construct uh, another solution, solution defined on some rescaling uh, time interval, just by rescaling your your initial solution, your, your given solution, in some sense. And this is this is the right uh, scaling. Okay, so the Navier-Stokes equations uh, have this scaling invariance uh, property. So given any solution, you can just, just rescale it to obtain a new, a new solution. And this is true for any uh, positive uh, lambda. What, uh, so, okay, having this in mind, we can define what we call critical uh, spaces for the Navier-Stokes equations, which are just spaces X where this, uh, this norm is invariant by this trans transformation. So if you take V lambda, which is defined here, you take the norm in, in X, you find exactly the same thing as the norm of V in X. So it, it is invariant by this transformation for all lambda. And this, this is gonna be very, very useful in the SQL because you working in, working in, in critical spaces is more or less the, 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 key, the key point to solve this equation. I, I, think, I think it's very, very, it's, it's very, very uh, related to, 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 to what are uh, uh, very related to, to, to the open questions in, in, in some sense of this uh, for, for these equations. I'll be very more, more specific about that in a, in a minute. So give me, just give me a minute. Well, only what you have to to to, put, uh, to, put on, uh, to keep in mind for now is that scaling invariant spaces are very are very important in the mathematical analysis of these equations. If I want to give you an example of that, I just have to consider the two-dimensional case and look at this, uh, this, this space appearing in my energy quality here. So all the spaces here, basically L infinity in time, L2, and L2 in time H1, H1 are invariant. So this, this is, these spaces are invari invariant by this uh, transformation. And this turns out to be very crucial to get the wall positiveness in the two-dimensional case. I'll get, uh, I'll back to talk about this uh, in, in the sequel. So the last point I want to mention here is what we call the pressure recovery. So if you if you if you notice here, we, we do not say anything about the pressure in, in in this in this equality here, and this is just because usually we do not really uh, look at the, the we ignore completely the pressure in the, at the first time just because you can recover it by this equation as I said, and the way to do it is just to apply the divergence operator to this to, to the, this first equation. So if you apply the divergence here, this guy will disappear, and this way this guy will disappear as well due to the divergence free condition, and you end up with an, an elliptic equation on P. So if you know U, basically if you know U here, V sorry V, if you know V, then you know P by solving an elliptic equation. So more or less, you can forget about the pressure at the first, uh, uh, at least for, for, for most of, of the results I'm, I'm going to, to tell you about. Okay, so these are all, all, all the, uh, the stuff you have to, to, to know before just look, taking a look at the, the $1 million question concerning the Navier-Stokes equations. So what we want to prove is the existence of smooth solutions for the Navier-Stokes equations in dimension three in, in the whole domain or in the torus, or uh, can, can you prove the breakdown of, of the Navier-Stokes solution? Meaning that, can you prove that smooth solutions should blow up at some finite time and, and in R3 or in the torus? So these, these, these four questions are basically the, the questions that will give you $1 million. In fact, to be, to be more precise, if you, if you prove this, you will get the $1 million. However, if you prove this, you will just be famous. You will not get the $1 million. $1 million. Okay, uh, let, let us try to give some partial answers to, 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 these, to, to these questions. And as, as I mentioned at the beginning, all of this is about the, the competition between these two guys. 
In fact, it turns out that you can prove, you can, you can give partial answers in, in the following sense. You can prove that if your initial data is small enough in some critical spaces, smooth say, then you can prove, uh, uh, sorry, you can prove a global, uh, yeah, uh, what I mentioned here, what, 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 I, what I write here, small data theory means that if your initial data is small, then you have uh, you have a very nice smooth So Of course, you, you know, should be uh, in, in some reasonable space small enough, then you have this, uh, uh, this answer to, 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 to these questions I mentioned before. So small data gives you a, a glo global, a global existence and uniqueness of solutions. If your data, however, is, is larger than some parameter that I will precise later, then you can prove that, but only on some short interval of time. This is what we call local, a local theory for, for large data. Okay, so if you know that, what is next? What, what comes next? First, you want maybe to relax some, uh, the condition here on your initial data, as I said. So you are requiring here your initial data to be small in some in some sense. So you, you, want, you want to know how much can you relax this this uh, this condition on your initial data. So maybe maybe this this will give you the opportunity to to cover more more initial data than than than, than what what is known here. So this is the first uh, uh, maybe the first thing to think about concerning the first point here. The second thing to to consider is what we is, is that you want you want to understand if there is a blow up you want to understand the, the, the mechanism of this blow up you want to to be able to say who is exactly the responsible of this, the responsible of this blow up if there is a blow up for the for 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 large data as I said so for the large data. It is not known that if, if, the, if the solutions blow up or it can be extended to, to, to large times. Okay, so uh, I'll, be, I'll be more specific about, about this, of course. Okay, so for the Navis toxic equations, there is also what we call mild, mild solutions, which, which are also strong solutions in, 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 in some sense. Let me just fix the viscosity to be one to, to, to make my, my notation simple, simpler. And in the sequel, I say that U is a mild solution or strong solution if it is a solution to this integral equation. So U is basically here a, a fixed point of this uh, uh, operator on, on, on U. Okay, so the delta uh, exponential exponential T delta is just the heat of, uh, propagator, the multiplication in, in Fourier side by a, a, a Gaussian, and B is the bilinear operator given by this expression here. Uh, uh, in terms of the, the heat propagator, and P here is Lyrae projector on divergence free vector field. Okay, so, so this is always to uh, so the divergence of uh, PF is always zero, whatever F is. As, as we, of course, F is a vector field here. If F is divergence free, so P, P of F equals to F. So this is if and only if the divergence of F is zero. Okay. 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 So the idea to construct uh, solutions for in, in this form is is very general. So you, here you have just to use a fixed point argument to prove that this uh, equation here has uh, a unique solution. In fact, and this is applicable, as I said, to to many to to, to many to, to a lot of equations of this form. So this is not restricted to to the Navis of equations. And the idea is, as usually, you you have to find some Banach space X for which the bilinear operator acts well. This is what I mean by what's well. It is it is just continuous with some constant here, uh, and dependent on you uh, and that and, and V, and if you have this, you have just to to suppose that you the free part here is small. In some in this sense, so it's smaller than one over c, uh, one over four for c. If you have this, you can construct a unique, uh, unique global solution in this ball here. So your solution will be, your solution will be uh, in x less than uh, one over two c. Okay, so this is global solution, and this, as I said, this is true. It doesn't really uh, use the, the, the structure of the equation. This is true for any equations that you can re rewrite it in this uh, in this form. Okay, so let me let me mention uh, some results in this direction as uh, as references. I'm considering strong solutions here. 
in the sense uh, I put it before. So Luray was the first one who proved the, the, the existence of global solutions for small data, local solutions for large data. The, as, I said, as I said, so the small theory data is, is, is always compared to, 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 to the viscosity. So mu, mu zero in some sense should be less than the viscosity. So when you are dealing with viscous fluids, this gives you more flexibility on the choice of, of on, on your initial data in some, in some sense. So the more mu is, then the more initial data you are capturing by this by this uh, theory, small data theory. So uh, uh, Luray gave uh, a first answer to that. If your initial data is uh, is in H1, the, the non-homogeneous H1, and later in '64, Fujita and Kato proved the, uh, the, this famous result. Say that if your initial data is the scaling invariant uh, subordinate spaces H, H D over two minus one, then you can construct global solutions if it is small, local solutions if it is it is large. Then uh, the so, uh, cat to prove it that you, you can in fact prove the same thing if you start with uh, uh, if you start with uh, a, a LD uh, in initial data. So what what is what is um, what is, what is the difference in between the two is the fact that you have this embedding in any dimension. Okay, so in some sense, Fujita and Kadu, Kadu ask, ask here for, for, for the initial data to be small in this, in this uh, space here. However, here you, you just need it to be small in LDLD. Here, I'm, I'm just giving examples, of course. The, the, the chain of this of this of these embeddings go, go, go goes further, and uh, there is the result. For instance, that I'm mentioning here in bits of spaces. I do not want to to bother you with the definition of these spaces here, but you can imagine this space to be at uh, or almost at the end of this of this chain uh, of, of this chain of, of embeddings here. So. Uh, Canon, Muir, and Plonson pro pro prove it here that if your initial data is small in this uh, X, in this base of space X here, then you can do basically the same thing. You can prove the, that you, uh, this is in fact a, a global a global theory for small data. Okay, let me not mention the local theory data for this. What is what is what is important uh, for um, about this result is that these spaces contain what what we contains what we call self-similar solutions in some sense and the rapid uh, rapidly oscillating data. So you can the typical example of initial data in this space is this this guy here. So if this is not divergence free, so I'll just write something like that. Okay, so this initial data, first of all, it is hom homogeneous of minus of, of degree minus one, and it does not belong to any Lebesgue space, any any subordinate space as well, but it belongs to this kind of spaces. So basically, this result takes takes into account this kind of, of, of initial data in some sense. So this this answers in some sense also this uh, this this question so you, you have some relaxation on on the initial data in terms of the space x and in terms of the, the condition on on, on the smallness in some sense okay so concerning the second question on on the blow up well the responsible of the blow up it turns out to be to be some critical norm so if you have a maximal solution if you if you, if you give me a maximal solution sorry sometimes i write to you sometimes i write to v but so sorry for that. So, if V is a maximal solution in in this uh, good space, so a space where where, where you can uh, where you can uh, solve your equations, so say that it does it, it is continuous up to uh, t till time t. This is what you mean by maximal solution. You cannot extend it a priori uh, beyond time t. Then this guy here should blow should blow up, and this is for any p and q. Uh, satisfying this relation. So this relation makes this LPLQ spaces uh, scaling, uh, critical in the sense I, I explained at, at the beginning. Uh, so this this is not uh, something that you can, at, at least for, for P equals infinity, this is, this is very hard to, to, to deal with. And this is due to, uh, let me find them here. This is due to the Sphirac and Sergin. Okay, I'll mention here some names of people who worked on, on, on this kind of problems. But the, hard, the, the, harder, the hardest part is when you deal with the, the case P equals infinity. I, 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 I would be back, I will talk about that at the, at the end of my, uh, I think at the beginning of, of the last part of my, of my talk. I'll be concerned in particular, uh, concerned, concerned by, by, this, by this particular case. 
Okay, so let us say a few words about the weak solutions. So all, all, all what I mentioned here is about the strong solutions. So what do we know uh, so far about uh, weak solutions? So you have this, this, uh, this energy equality and you want to solve at the level of energy. So you, you have something which is globally controlled and you want to solve at, at, at the level of this information. And this is what, uh, what we call uh, in, the, in the literature by turbulent solution on Luray's weak solution. So, so uh, Luray, so let, let me just uh, recall the definition here. A, tu a turbulent solution is a weak solution in the sense that I, I, I explained at the beginning. So it is a solution in the sense of distribution and you ask it to, to be, uh, to satisfy the energy inequality. So you do not ask it to satisfy an energy equality, but just in inequality due to some lack of compactness in this uh, uh, fin uh, in finite dimensional uh, spaces. Okay, so this is what we call in the sequel turbulent solution. And Luray proved in, in his thesis that if you give me any initial data in square integrable in any dimension, then you can prove that at least there is a, a glo one, one, one global uh, turbulent solution to, to the Navier Stokes equations. Then the, the particular, the, the part, the particular um, Issue about so yeah the, the, the first first thing the, the uniqueness of the, uh, in any dimension is still open so we do not we do not have we do not, do not know if these solutions are, are unique or no and this is in some sense equivalent to to, to the one million dollar uh, I, I will I will say I'll comment on that in the next slide however in two dimensional case as I said so the energy equality is is critical in uh, regarding the the scale of the equations and in this case you have the uniqueness so Laura proved that in dimension two given initial data in L2, you can construct only one global turbulent solution. And it turns out that this unique solution is smooth as much as you want. If you are just after t, uh, t, t, t equals zero, okay? So it gains regularity just by, uh, by the smoothing, smoothing effect of the Laplacian. So in, in, in broad terms, in dimension two, we, we, we know how to, how to answer the, the $1 million question. Okay, so Clay's Kle question is well understood in dimension two. However, in dimension three, things uh, collapse and you, you, you do not have a, a, a complete answer to that. So the, the last thing I want to mention in concerning that is what we call weak, strong uniqueness. So imagine that I give you two solutions. So U is basically a turbulent solution and V is a strong solution that you construct by fixed point fixed point argument or something else. So imagine that you have two uh, solutions like that defined on the same interval of time, say zero T, then if you can prove that the weak solution is, is in particular uh, in some LPLQ spaces, critical LPLQ spaces, then you have the uniqueness. So we have, you, have, you can prove, and under this assumption, you can prove that the weak solution is in fact a strong solution and then it should, it should be, it, it should be uh, defined on, on the whole interval zero T as a strong solution, not only uh, a turbulent solution. Okay, so let me uh, mention something about the, um, the Burgess equation. So Bilal uh, in his talk, so uh, he, he spoke about the Burger, Burgess equations and some, some regularization of the Burgess equation. So let us here just consider the simplest maybe regularization of these, uh, these equations. This is the Burgers equations, and I'm just adding something, some, some dissipation to, to, to my equations. And this is very similar to, to the, to the Navier-Stokes equations. What, I, what, I'm, what I'm missing here is the, Lapla, the, the, the pressure and the divergence-free condition on, 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 the, on the solution. So these are the two differences between the Burgers equation, the, the viscous Burgers equations, and the 3D Navier-Stokes equation. But it turns out that Without these two guys here, we can prove the global well positions of these equations in the Fujita and Kato uh, settings. Yeah, this is the precise statement of that. If your initial data is in H one half, this is the non-homogeneous one, then you can construct a unique strong solution which is continuous globally in time and gain some regularity due to, 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 to the smoothing effect here. And in fact, it, it, it is not just like that, but uh, if, you, if, you, if you ignore what happens at time t, this, your solution is a classical solution. It is in fact C1 uh, with values in C0 and C1 with values in C2, which means that you can give a sense to all these terms here. This, is a, this becomes a classical solution just by 
an initial data which is uh, in H one half. I, let me recall you that H one half. So H one half is L two H one half. So this is this is a critical one for for the for the Navier Stokes equation and also for for the, for the Berger equation. This is a critical uh, space in dimension three. Okay, so if you if, you, if we compare this to the Fujita and Kato uh, theory, this is what we have. So Fujita and Kato proved that this is true. So the same thing holds, but if your initial data is small, that's small compared to the viscosity. So this is the small data theory. If your initial data is large, then you can prove this, but only locally in time. So this does not give you a, a complete answer as, as this theorem here gives. And the main difference between the two is that the Berger's equation here so it satisfies the maximum principle. However, for the the, the Navier-Stokes equation does not satisfy, that do not equations do not satisfy the maximum principle, and this is due to the pressure which this distorts any 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 chances to to to, to do that. Okay, so I just wanted want, wanted to mention that to 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 connect to to uh, this all of this to to Bilal's uh, Bilal's talk uh, last week. Okay, so let us move now to talk about the Euler equation, which is the, the MVC uh, model uh, of, of the Navier-Stokes equation. So what we are what we are removing here from, from the Navier-Stokes equations, we are just taking mu equals zero. So this is Navier-Stokes equations with mu equals zero. You are just ignoring. You are considering fluid which is not viscous at all. The same notations as I mentioned before. So I need to to talk about that uh, here. What we uh, what we can prove at least formally that you have uh, what we call the relative energy here, which is conserved at least for, for at least for uh, strong solutions, for classical solutions, solutions that are good enough to do some integration by parts here to, 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 get, to get this. Uh, in fact, I'm not to be concerned a lot by, by this. The scale name variance, you have more flexibility on that. You have a lot, in fact, you have a lot of conserved quantities here in conservation labs. So I'm not mentioning here few few of them. And the scale name variance also, you have a lot of scale and variant properties for R alpha. This is not going to be very important in my talk, but I just wanted to, to mention it as I, I uh, because I just want, uh, because I said few 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 things about it for an every stock sequence. So I have to I have to to say a few things about the Euler as well. Okay, so what do we know so far concerning the Euler equation for the MVC, uh, this MVC, MVC model? So that there is a local or positive theory due to, to Kotlato. You can also see Malta and Bertrosi work in, in 2002. So basically you can prove that if your initial data is smooth enough, uh, say in, in some subolar spaces, which is uh, an algebra in some sense, higher than dimension over two plus one, then you can construct at least locally, uh, a smooth solution that satisfies your equations in, in classical sense. So this is a local solution. And the, the question that, ca that comes just after is the blow up uh, criterion. So what happens if there is a blow up? If this, if this guy blows up at finite time T store, then what happens? And the criterion here says that the Lipschitz norm of your velocity should blow up as well. Okay, so if you have, if, if T star is maximal time of existence in HS, then the Lipschitz norm of the velocity should blow up uh, at this star. In fact, we can prove a little bit better. You can prove that not, not, not the whole, uh, all the component of, let me recall, so the gradient of U will be something like that. U1, et cetera, and you have U2, U2, et cetera. So this is, uh, this is a gradient matrix. So this matrix, gradient matrix of, of U. So you have, you have you have like d, d times t component here. But in fact, what we can prove is that only the vorticity, uh, only of a, a specified combination of, of this matrix, grid matrix should, should blow up. Okay, so this is what we call the vorticity. So if there is a blow up in HS, this quantity should blow up. If you, if you look at the, the, the other sense of, of, of this implication, it means that if you control the, the L1, L infinity norm of, of omega, so there is no blow up, okay? Just by uh, considering the contraposition of, of this uh, statement here. Okay, so you have this, this very nice blow up criterion. What, what comes next is the, the, the study of, of the equation governed by, by this guy here. So you want to, to understand what, uh, what, 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 can, what can you prove for, for these for this equations. So this is basically a transport equation with a nonlinear term here. So, um, this behaves more or less like 
uh, like omega square in some sense. Okay, so but uh, okay, so if you look at the two dimensional case, just by a few computation, you can show that omega is in fact a scalar function appearing just in the third direction. And in this case, this guy is, is vanishing. So it's like you have, you have a transport equation with a zero forcing term, and this gives you for free uh, uh, a conservation of the, all, all the LP, LP norms of omega. So just if you, if you ignore this guy, it's a transport equation with a divergence free vector field. So all the LP norms are basically conserved. Okay, so uh, including the L infinity, of course, including the, uh, the, 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 the L infinity, and this gives you for free uh, global well poisonous for strong solutions. So I recall you that here, right, we said that we have blow up if and only if this guy blows up. So if you control it globally, so you control it, you, you, don't, you don't have any, any blow up for, for solutions. So this gives you for free the global well poisonous of, this, of the, these equations in the 2D case. And this, it turns out that in this case, the implicit case, the divergence free, free ensures better results compared to, to, to the Burgers equation. So you, if I compare it also with, with, with what Bilal said in, in, uh, uh, last week, so if you take the one dimensional Burgers equations, let me write it in this way, the notation of, of Bilal. So if uh, Bilal said that the, 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 there, is, there is no way to control this guy in an uh, infinity. So this guy should blow up as t goes to, to some t star. This, this should, should blow up. However, here, there is a hope to control some component of the gradient matrix. This is due to the divergence free condition on U that gives you this particular uh, equation in dimension two for, for, the, for, for the vorticity. This is, this is the difference in between the, the, the MVC case. So it turns out that in this case, uh, the Euler equation is better than, than the Berger's uh, equations. Okay, so let's say a few words about uh, the weak solution. So these are, this was about, what I told you about here was about strong solutions. Let's say a few words about the weak solutions. I'm not going to, uh, to go into the details of this, well, this may be uh, less interesting. In, in this, this case, people are were looking to the weak solutions at the level of the energy and the uniqueness is, is already known that it does not hold in, the, in this situation. So let us look at uh, Udovich's solution. Which is, which is a solution based on this uh, global a priori estimates uh, on omega. Okay, so if you take an omega in L1 and infinity, you, you have at least this formally, and the result of Yudovich confirms that, in fact, you, you can construct a solution on the, uh, uh, you can construct a, solu a unique solution starting with uh, an initial data, which is in L1, and an infinity. You do not have to ask your for, for, for additional regularity as, as 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 I mentioned here. But this is this is for, for weak solutions. So you, you have to be clear about, about this is for, for weak weak solutions. Okay, so this uh, leads us to the following uh, problem about the, what we call the vortex patch problem. So I started to look at this recently, and I'll try to give you a short sort of introduction to that. So the vortex patch patch problem is the following. So imagine that you are taking uh, an initial omega, which is just the indicator of some of some bounded connected smooth domain of, of omega naught in in compact also in R two. Okay. So this in particular says that omega is in L one times L infinity. Uh, okay. So omega is, is bound is bounded and it's in L one. So with this particular initial data, you can construct a unique global solution to the Euler equation due to Udovich's solution. Uh, I, I don't know, should, should, I, should I stop uh, here, maybe, or? You have, uh, you have five minutes. Okay, because uh, maybe later it's gonna be a bit, uh, if, if, you, if you want to, 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 to take a break now, I think, uh, I think I'm, I'm okay with that. If you, Okay, we we can uh, take a break now if we if we uh, want. if you have questions concerning the first part before. I... Okay, there are any question? Uh, maybe me. Okay, they are me. Yes. Um, thank you, 